What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And on today's video, we are gonna be looking at the Adidas Prime X2 Strong. And look, right off the bat, this shoe isn't ideal. I didn't expect to really like this shoe very much at all. And there are several things with the shoe that just didn't work for me. But even with all those things, there is a massive upside to the Prime X2 Strong. Let's get into it. Let's get some disclosures out of the way. This video is a partnership between me and Roadrunner Sports, and Roadrunner Sports was good enough to send me the Adidas Prime X2 Strong for the purpose of review. However, they are not going to get a chance to see this video before you do. They haven't told me what to say, and all the thoughts and opinions are my own. So I think we should just get started off with price, and we're going to come back to price at the end, but I think it's important going forward that you know how much this shoe is going to cost if you are going to consider it, and it will cost you $300. So it's expensive. It's more expensive than the vast majority of race day shoes out there, and ultimately this is not not a race day shoe. Or is it? I mean, we'll talk more about that when we talk about ride. But of course, weight is also something that people want to know when we talk about shoes. And I'm going to have to keep changing it from hand to hand because the Adidas Prime X2 Strong is not exactly the lightest shoe that you have probably ever run in or thought about running in. In fact, Adidas claims that in a US men's size 9, the Prime X2 Strong would tip the scale at 10 ounces or 283 grams. However, in my size, a US men's size 13, unsurprisingly, the weight goes up quite a bit. And in my size, the Prime X2 Strong weighs in at 13.9 ounces or 393 grams. That's just shy of 400 grams on each foot. And I know for some of you that that weight, that weight is going to be a non-starter, especially when you consider the price. And how most shoe companies, especially when they're talking about shoes that they want you to run fast in, they put a lot of effort into cutting the weight. But let's get into the shoe because there's a lot more to it than just the price and the weight. So as always, let's start at the top. Let's work our way down. I'm gonna hold this up and you can see it is a very thin heel collar. In fact, we have these little bolsters on each side and there is no padding right here at the back of the heel. This actually works quite well for me. I enjoy this amount of padding. I guess if I had to choose, if I would like a heel counter, I would always choose one, but the Prime X2 Strong does not have any heel counter. This is very loosey-goosey here in the back. And when I put my foot into the shoe, it doesn't feel totally locked down. It doesn't feel like I'm not going anywhere. I can feel a little bit of movement in my heel when my foot is seated. Now the upper, as the name suggests, is the strong material. And I just think this is the best looking upper I have ever seen. I just love it. I knew I liked how it looked when I saw it online, but in person, the strong upper is just stunning. In fact, I wish I could buy all my shoes in the strong upper. It looks that good. Now the tongue is a very thin knit material and the knit material goes right into the strong upper. So the fit of the Primex 2 Strong is like a booty. There's no traditional tongue put your foot in, tighten the laces, and the whole kind of booty fit just tightens down around your midfoot. And overall, I thought the strong upper fit very well around my foot. I had plenty of room in the toe box. I did get a good midfoot lockdown for the most part. We'll come back to that in just a second. And I had no issues with the tongue. As far as overlays go, there, there really aren't any. The strong material is just strong enough to keep that upper in the right position. These Adidas stripes seem to be, they're kind of woven in throughout the strong upper. I think it looks pretty good. And come along the eyelet chain, we don't have any reinforcement along the entire chain, but we do have these little loops that the laces go through. And in my testing, I haven't had any trouble with them. It looks like they're sewn in right at the bottom, so they're not going anywhere. And then when we come up to the top, you can see this little piece of plastic for the top two eye holes, and this really is a piece of plastic right at the top, but we do have these two eyelet holes with a top eyelet hole, so you could do a runner's knot. So remember I was saying that I did have a loose feeling in my heel, potentially I could do the runner's knot, and that should eliminate any heel slip, or at least that feeling of looseness in my heel. I'll tell you though, even though I did feel a little bit of looseness, it was just that feeling of looseness that I tend to get in shoes that don't have a heel counter, but when I was running, I didn't experience any heel slip. So I didn't have to do the runner's knot when I was wearing the Primex 2 Strong. Adidas has included their little, their little elf ear, heel tab on the back which I used every single time putting my foot in. Now look, it wasn't a challenge to put my foot in but I guess it was more challenging than some other shoes, some shoes with a normal lacing mechanism but it certainly wasn't as difficult as putting my foot into race shoes with a tight weave upper. So think something like the Hoka Rocket X2 or the Nike Vaporfly 3. I have a terrible time getting my feet into those but that's just because that's how the fit of the shoe it makes it difficult to put your foot in but once your foot is in it feels comfortable. I didn't have that much trouble with the Prime X2 Strong and when my foot was in, it felt good. If we come down to the midsole, but this is what it's all about. This is this is the hype train of the Prime X2 Strong. We have 50 millimeters in the heel, 43 and a half millimeters in the forefoot, 46 and a half millimeter drop. And of course, according to World Athletics Rule C 2.1A Appendix 3, the 50 millimeters of stack heights in this shoe makes it illegal. That's right. This shoe is forbidden. If you want to use it in competition, in competitions that are governed by World Athletics and you're actually a contender. If you are a contender and you have to pay attention to World Athletics rules, let me know in the comments. But I got a strange feeling that you and I, these rules really don't apply to us. 
And if you wanted to use the Prime X2 strung in a race with this whole 50 millimeter stack height, you're more than welcome to. It's not gonna make any difference. In fact, it's gonna feel really good. Now, while we're talking about rules and regulations in this 50 millimeter stack height, there is no stack height restriction on trail runs. I suppose if there was ever like a hard packed trail marathon, you could actually wear the shoe without violating any of World Athletics rules. But on the other side, you're probably not gonna wanna use a running shoe with a 50 millimeter drop on the trails. Now, this giant stack of midsole is all Light Strike Pro. In fact, there are three layers of Light Strike Pro. Well, there are actually two layers in the back and three in the front. And technically, this middle layer is the energy core. And this energy core is slightly softer than the Light Strike Pro above and below. How much softer is the energy core, you ask? Let's find out. I have my handy dandy durometer right here. So let's try the top layer of Light Strike Pro. We have 26 and a half. The bottom layer of Light Strike Pro is 23 and the energy core, the soft energy core is 20, 21, 18 and a half. It's actually difficult to get a good reading. Let me try again. Yeah, same, 20. So we've got 26 in the top. I think the bottom is gonna be very similar. Yeah, we've got 27 this time, and then 20 for the energy core. Quite a bit softer, but that's not the end of the story. Surrounding this energy core, so on the top and the bottom, are two carbon fiber plates. Now the top plate, the one on the top of the energy core, that's a four length plate from heel to toe. The plate beneath the energy core is a three quarter length. And you can actually see this bottom plate right here on the side, both on the lateral side and the medial side. And if I hold up the shoe, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but there is actually there is a hole, there's a void going right through the middle, and this is where you get a good view of the three layers of Light Strike Pro. And then if we look on the bottom of the shoe, we can actually see both plates. Now we have this little cutout in the midsole right here. And if I hold it up, you can see the lower plate and a little window is cut into the lower plate so you can see the top plate through it. Pretty cool. Three layers of Light Strike Pro, two carbon plates. There are a lot of goodies in this shoe. Oh, and then while we're on the bottom, we do have Continental Rubber. Now, the rubber looks very slick, but I didn't encounter any slipping when I was wearing this shoe, and I've worn this shoe quite a bit. Also, while we're talking about this outsole rubber, it does seem to have quite a bit of coverage, and what I was pleasantly surprised to see is when I look at this lateral heel area, this is where I generally touch down, especially when I'm running easy, but guys, I see absolutely zero wear, and I have over 50 miles on this shoe as of the filming of this video. So, by saying that, by saying that I've got no wear, I mean, yeah, the shoe is probably going to last, at least it will last longer than I expected it to before I actually started running in it. But look, this isn't me justifying paying $300 for a shoe. I'm just saying that it's probably gonna last a little while. Just looking at the amount of outsole wear, I'd say it's gonna last longer than a lot of those other race shoes. This isn't a race shoe. Ultimately, this is a this is a super trainer. This is a shoe that you can use for all your training runs, but it picks up the pace very well. Okay, let's let's talk about the ride. Then I want to come back and I want to tell you about the things I don't like. So the ride of the Prime X2 Strung, it's very responsive. For me, it feels good at most of the speeds that I generally train at. And I say most of the speeds, not all of the speeds. So it works well when you're running very slow. I think you could go out for an easy plod in this shoe. But also when I get up to marathon pace or a little faster than marathon pace, that's where the Prime X2 Strung feels its absolute best. So I think my first run in this shoe was just taking it out just like a familiarization run I went out and I ran very easy and I thought yeah it feels pretty good my next run was 10 miles at marathon pace and before I went out on that workout I thought to myself am I going to be able to do this workout properly am I going to be able to hit the paces that I need to hit for this specific workout in this shoe that is a little heavier than I'd usually choose for a shoe to do these workouts but guys when I got up to marathon speed even up to 10 seconds faster than marathon speed the shoe felt fantastic and in the beginning of my workout I thought this was a contender for a marathon racer. Of course, we all feel good at the beginning of our runs, at the beginning of our workouts. And I did start to notice the weight a little bit towards the end of that session. But throughout the session, the shoe still felt extremely good and extremely responsive. In fact, if I hold it up, you can see this, this toe spring right here. This creates a very aggressive ride. So when you do start picking up the pace, this shoe does feel like it's kind of throwing you forward. It's that station that we want to get in a race day shoe. Of course, that's a product of all the technology that's been put into the shoe with these three layers of Light Strike Pro, especially this energy core. And then you've got two carbon fiber plates, which makes this shoe so rigid. In fact, I think it's probably the most rigid shoe I've ever felt. I just, I can't bend that shoe at all. It's rigid like I'm trying to bend a piece of stone. And that rigidity and all this foam makes for a very fast feeling ride. And that fast feeling ride, that's the reason that it feels like it may work for a race day shoe. And I would say it's possible this will work better as a race day shoe than some of the other super trainers that don't have a stiffer plate. You know, there are several shoes out there that have 
kind of a soft plate and it doesn't give you that aggressive ride that we're looking for in a carbon plated shoe. I really shouldn't say that, that we're looking for. Some of us are looking for that aggressive forward propulsion when we choose a carbon plated shoe. And not all carbon plated shoes feel that way. When you put a bendy plate into a shoe, it often gives it a feeling of support rather than forward propulsion. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, Matt, what about this 50 millimeters in the heel and 43 and a half in the forefoot? It must be like wearing stilts. And yes, it is like wearing stilts. So I went on holiday and my wife and I, we went on a cruise and I was walking down the hallway and I'm actually, if you didn't already know, I'm a little taller than average. My height in bare feet is just a shade over six foot seven. So when I put on shoes like this, they give me a little bump in height. And you can see right now, I'm walking down the hallway on a cruise ship and I had to watch out for the sprinkler heads and the signs hanging down from the ceiling because when I had these shoes on, I would hit my head on everything. Most of the time I can walk through doorways, but I had to duck when I'm wearing the Primex too strong. I guess that's a downside to this shoe, but listen, most of the time we're not gonna be walking around in day-to-day -day life. And most of you are probably not six foot seven, so you probably don't have to worry about that. Okay, yes, so that is a downside, but it's not really a downside because this shoe was incredibly stable. I mean, let me hold it up this way. Can you see this sole flare coming up? Probably better if I show you from the bottom. This is a very wide base. And what I found most surprising is that on none of my runs did I ever feel unstable. Because of this stack height, I assumed that this shoe was going to feel like the Nike Vaporfly, except 10 times worse. And it didn't. It didn't at all. This shoe felt as stable as anything I've ever put on my feet. In fact, even when I tried to kind of roll my foot while I was running, it was very difficult. And that is mainly because we have a super wide base. So if you're worried about the inherent instability of having a very high stack height, I think Adidas has really done a good job making a stable ride. Okay, so we've talked about the shoe. We've talked about things that I like. The shoe feels really good on the run. Let's talk about something that I didn't like. And the things that I didn't like didn't appear to me right away. So I probably ran 20 miles in the Prime X2 Strong before I actually noticed this. But I'm gonna hold it up and I want you to look at how these shoes are laced. You see, we start here, we come up, we come up. Oh, what's this? This lace loop has been skipped. And what I found was that when I had cinched down the laces on this shoe, I started getting a little pressure right here on the top of my foot. Now, if I put my hand inside and I feel where this lace loop is, there's nothing that really sticks out, but it is just slightly firmer. And I think it's where they've sewn this lace loop into the strong upper. So it may stick out just slightly. And when you apply pressure, when you lace it down and you cinch those laces down so the upper is tight against your midfoot, it creates a lot of pressure. I guess the most important thing that I want to get across to you is that even though I had this pressure and I had to reroute my laces, didn't have any issues running in the shoe when the laces were rerouted to different eyelets. Okay, so why don't we wrap this up. And guys, I've got to tell you that because of the ride, because of how this geometry makes you feel fast, because of the Light Strike Pro and the two carbon fiber plates, I think this is my favorite Adidas shoe that I've ever run in. And remember, this is a shoe that is almost 400 grams in my size, and yet it feels fantastic. Even with this messed up lacing system that gave me hotspots and I had to reroute them, I think this is my favorite feeling Adidas shoe ever. Now, keep in mind, I haven't run in the Adidas Pro, but I've run in quite a few Adidas shoes. But I'm a fan of how this shoe feels. It feels great on the run. I love this strong upper. But saying that, I don't know, $300, guys. $300 is a lot of money. Are there better options out there? There are a lot of shoes out there. And for you to spend $300 on this, I don't know. I understand that it's going to be a bit of a stretch for anyone. But if you don't worry about money, then maybe some of you out there that, that don't, that just want something a little different to, to fill a niche. I think if you have the disposable income to buy the Primex Too Strong, the shoe feels fantastic. Now, remember, you probably wouldn't want to race in it, but for a training shoe, this is pretty good. Oh, and if you're wondering, this strong upper, it's made with at least 50% recycled materials. So as always, Adidas is doing their bit for the planet. And yeah, good shoe. I'm gonna keep running in this one. This is a solid training option. And with that, it's Matt B. This has been my review of the Adidas Prime X2 Strong. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.